Hi, this is Seth David with SchoolofBookkeeping.com bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about five tips for how to make your spreadsheets look gorgeous. Hi, welcome to SchoolofBookkeeping.com. I'm Seth David and this is five tips for how to make your spreadsheets look gorgeous. But first, the inspiration for this video came from another video that we've done uh, on Microsoft Excel. It was this video on how to pass an Excel test. It recently surpassed 100,000 videos. And when that happens, YouTube sort of uh, gets excited for you and starts promoting it more. And with additional promotion comes more people and based on that, more comments. So uh, most recently, uh, it looks like April here, let me get the newest comments up. April here writes, not to be the mistake police, but I'm sure that you should, I'm not sure that you should be teaching this class. You made an awful lot of mistakes and you said the instructions were poor, but I think it was just your interpretation because the instructions were perfectly clear to me. Well, April, thank you for the comments. I actually reviewed the video again because I wanted to see what were the mistakes I made. There are no examples here of any mistakes I made, just the general blanket statement that I made a quote, awful lot of mistakes. I went through, I don't see that I actually made any mistakes. In fact, I'm pretty sure I gave the proper instructions for how to accomplish every single one of these tasks. Uh, I did get tripped up here at about four minutes, 34 seconds, because the uh, instructions in item number five asked to create a row under G10. And it did confuse me for a minute in terms of whether that was a cell reference of G10, especially since we're in that part of the spreadsheet. Uh, ultimately, I did figure out that they wanted a total of the columns under the product that was called G10. And perhaps I should have noted that since it was G-10, maybe that should have made it more clear. Nonetheless, I felt the instructions were confusing. Congratulations, April, on being so incredibly intelligent. Um, the other thing that I got tripped up on was at the end when I tackled the bonus question, and it says uh, create a row that, uh, that will calculate the revenue you need to reflect a 20% increase in revenue per quarter. So I showed two ways that that could be interpreted and having re, you know, rewatched it, having watched it again, I still believe there's two ways that could be interpreted. It could be uh, a 20% revenue increase in each quarter. So I could be looking at last quarter and projecting that as an increase for the current quarter. Or I could be looking at it quarter over quarter and saying, all right, well, if it was this much last year in this quarter, uh, and I want a 20% increase this year, I showed you how to lay that out. So I showed you two ways to do it. Now, frankly, in my other company, Nerd Enterprises, we do some sophisticated financial modeling work for clients. And I uh, would actually want to hire the guy or girl who came back to me in response to that last question and said, well, which way do you want it done? I'd want somebody who kind of thinks for themselves and also knows when and where to ask questions and ask for help because that would be the person that I would be confident in that they would do the research they needed to make sure they got the answer right. Now, with that said, thank you, April, for inspiring me to do yet another video on Microsoft Excel. And we're going to look at five tips for how to make your spreadsheets look gorgeous. So let's add a new sheet here. And tip number one, shade the entire sheet. A number of ways you can do this. You can press Control and the letter A, and that highlights everything. And that's kind of universal, certainly in every Microsoft product. That will always do a select all. That'll also work a lot on websites and other things, too. Uh, also, you can click right here between the A and the 1, and that will highlight the entire spreadsheet. So once you've got the entire spreadsheet selected, then you can uh, you know, fill it in, you shade it in, uh, and you, know, you pick based on what looks appealing to you. I just choose a light gray. So shade the entire sheet, and you're going to see where this comes in really handy in just a second. Because tip number two, first, always start in... B2, right? And, and this is not a product reference. This is a, uh, you know, cell reference, right? Column B, row two. And somebody recently asked me why I do that. In fact, they just noticed that I was doing that. And they said, hey, Seth, why do you always start there? And I, the answer very simply is to leave a buffer in case I need to insert rows or columns, especially if I've got formulas written. Uh, you have to be careful where you insert rows or columns because uh, depending where you do, the formulas may or may not expand to include those new rows or columns. So that's one of the reasons, that's the main reason I always start in B2 is to leave that buffer in, in both the row and the column. Now, we're going to look at, now we want to, let's say, um, start putting data into our spreadsheet. So we want to highlight a range where we're going to have data 
and this is tip number three we're going to remove the shading from that range so what this does is it provides you with the contrast so I have the whole spreadsheet filled out but then it really kind of lights up the area where I have the data that I want to show so that's tip number three remove the shading from the section that you want to highlight because it makes it stand out very nicely it draws your eyes right to exactly the uh, part of the spreadsheet it is that you want people to be looking at Next, we're going to show you how to set up some sample data. So let's say you need some sample data in here. Uh, if nothing else, even if just as a filler to begin with. Uh, there's a great formula in Excel called RAND, which is short for random, equals R-A-N-D, open parentheses, and then you can actually just close parentheses. And the initial result is going to give you a decimal. Uh, so if you do, say, times 100, you'll get a, a nice uh, round number there. Um, and let's say we do a thousand, right? So now we get, you know, it's just how many significant figures you want. But notice also I get a long decimal here. So let's build on that and also round it. Just round the whole thing, round open parentheses in front of the round formula. Hit the end key, comma two for two decimal places, close parentheses. So now I've got nice round, you know, numbers rounded to two decimal places. And then copy and paste that let's say into the whole region again always leave a little buffer for yourself in case you need it so that's how we can get random data in there and then this is almost like a three-part tip because now we want to harden these because notice I've got these formulas in here and you may also notice if I go out here for example and I just type a one and hit enter they keep updating every time I do something they update even deleting the one they update so if, if the goal is just to get random numbers in here once I've got them then you're gonna to want to press control C and then we can do any number of things uh, but what, what I'm getting at is we want to do a paste special values here so we can paste the values back onto themselves replacing the formulas that produce those values so a right click this is the paste values uh, quick command, but in case you're not sure, you can go right here to paste special and over here to values and then click OK. And now notice the formula is gone and I've just got hard numbers everywhere. So that was uh, tip number four, how to set up sample data using random and paste the values. So tip number five. Shade the headers and freeze the rows and columns if necessary. So let's say these were uh, years of data, right? So year one, and let's just fill that in real quick. There's another tip. You can use your autofill by just clicking the lower right extremity. And, you know, who knows? Maybe these are different products. So maybe these are sales and these are products. So this is product one. And let's fill it down. But now we want our headers to stand out, of course. So going across the entire top, one thing I often like to do is just make it simple, black and white. That certainly makes it stand out. And bold them, since they're headers. These you might want to do, you know, like something else, like a different shade of gray. Again, there's no right or wrong here. This is really strictly a matter of, you know, what you feel is appealing. And sometimes on something like this, I'll even change the font color, right? So this, and, and then freeze the rows. That was the other part of the tip. So that's easy to do under view. We can go to freeze panes, and what Excel does is it assumes wherever I've got the cell pointer here is based is where I want to freeze everything, rows and or columns. So if I've got it situated here, right below year one and right next to product one, then when I go to freeze panes, you'll notice it will freeze both rows and columns. And then as I scroll down, it holds the rows steady. As I scroll to the right, it holds the columns steady. I said that backwards. As I scroll down, it holds the columns and then to the right. You get the point. Now I can get rid of my buffer because I've got headers clearly established, so I'm not worried anymore about inserting. So I can delete my extra row and column there, and now I've got a nice, neat spreadsheet. Again, as I scroll down, I got the, uh, you know, the uh, the column the the column headers are, are constant, right? I want to make sure I don't say that wrong because April might have something to say about it. And then as I scroll to the right, my row labels stay steady and constant that my friends is five tips for how to make your spreadsheets look gorgeous as always i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and i look forward to seeing you on the web